begin. All right, so before we get into the how, why don't I just detail why for a second, right? Like, so I was on the two terabyte iCloud plan for several years. It was 10 bucks a month. That's not a lot of money. So why go through all the work and energy to shave that down to, you know, 200 gigs, which I was on for the past year. So I'm really only spending $3 a month on iCloud storage. And all of the things I'm gonna talk to you about today took time, they took energy, and they caused stress, and it was a lot of work, all just to save three bucks a month. Is that worth the cost savings? For a lot of you, probably not, but for me and my wife, it was more so about the principle. It was not so much about the cost. It was that we are just getting sick and annoyed with all of the recurring subscriptions that are bombarded with us day by day. More and more companies are doing it, and my biggest problem with iCloud is that there's no unlimited tier, which means that at some point, whether you have five gigs, whether you have two terabytes, even if you have Apple One Premiere and you have four terabytes of iCloud storage, it's only a matter of time you will eventually fill that up and you will have to start cycling through pictures and videos and trying to figure out what you can throw out, what you can store locally, what you can store elsewhere. And I didn't like that regardless of what the future had in store, eventually I was going to fill that up. And while today it's $3 a month, inflation is a very real thing. And clearly Mr. Tim Cook is very, very happy to pivot Apple to become more and more of a services company. He loves his recurring revenue. So I don't know when, it could be in a year, it could be tomorrow. It could be five years from now, but at some point Apple is probably going to increase the prices on iCloud and maybe they'll try to make it a better deal. Like, yeah, you can upgrade and we'll give you 500 gigs instead of 200, but now it's going to be five bucks a month or eight bucks a month. And they're going to adjust their pricing with the time. I don't expect the free iCloud tier to get any better because Apple now has over a billion registered and active Apple IDs. That means that for every one gig you want for free, so every time you complain like, man, Apple should make it 10 gigs or Apple should make it 50 gigs for free. Every single one gigabyte is an extra exabyte of cloud space that Apple would have to pay for with no expectation of getting any return on investment. Basically, if you're saying like 20 gigs or 10 gigs of iCloud storage should be free for all users, you're asking them to pay for five or 15 exabytes of cloud storage just because like that would be nice. You know, it, it's easy for us to shake our fist up at the big boys at Apple because they're so rich and they have so much money. But from a business perspective, I think it's fair to say like, is any company interested in buying like 20 exabytes of cloud space just for free so that their customers can be a little bit happier, especially a company like Apple that's pushing everyone to go TV plus, Apple music, arcade, news plus. No, I think the iCloud prices will eventually get worse or the free cloud storage option might just go away entirely. Maybe they'll start charging us just to have an Apple ID in the future. So no, this wasn't so that we could just save $3 a month and our budget is that tight. It was more so just out of principle, not wanting to pay monthly for something that was limited anyway. So you can disagree with it. A lot of you probably don't want to go through this effort. I don't blame you, but I just wanted to share my experience of all the things we ended up doing to get our iCloud storage down far enough. So for one, we took advantage of the Google Photos unlimited storage option while it was available. Unfortunately, you can't do this anymore unless you figure out some roundabout way to hide hijack a Pixel 1, which by the way, you can still upload unlimited photos and videos from Pixel 1 devices, as long as Google Photos still works on them. Even though it's not running the latest Android, it will technically back up all your pictures and videos at original quality. There's other channels that have detailed how you can get other photos from other phones onto the Pixel 1 and upload from there. But yeah, for the most part, I didn't have a Pixel 1, obviously, so while Google Photos was allowing it, I offloaded as many pictures and videos as I could onto Google Photos, deleted them from iCloud, and that was the bulk of how we got down from two terabytes to 200 gigs, which only saves seven bucks a month, but that's also a tenth of the amount of storage. So it took some time. It took a lot of bandwidth. Going to friends' houses who had fiber was also quite useful in that scenario. But okay, me and my wife are the only people on the plan. We got it shared between 200 gigs. Three bucks a month felt like a big savings, but a year had gone by and we were like, eh, we could do better, especially 
because we were already hitting the upper limit of 200 gigs and we were getting the upgrade iCloud storage. You're out of space. You're out of space all the time. And I was like, okay, it feels like no matter what I pay Apple, I'm going to get this pop up. So why don't we just pay nothing? So we started looking into what's left. Well, how do we get this down under 50 gigs? Or if we can get to 50, why not bring it all the way to five? And I found that I was storing a lot of documents for my work, intros, outros, you know, nostalgia stuff for the channel on iCloud Drive. And that was taking up a decent number of gigs, but it started clicking in my head. You know, I just bought this M1 Max MacBook Pro. And because you guys were so supportive and also because I record multiple 4K at 60 videos a day, I need a lot of local storage. I know it's only a matter of time before I fill it up, but I got the eight terabyte option because we do plan on taking trips and we have taken trips with my MacBook and having all of that local storage as we're traveling for me to work away from home, just like I was able to post videos for several weeks when we were in Puerto Rico. Having all of that local storage is nice, but because it's so early in the MacBook Pro's life, I've not filled up the eight terabytes yet. So I was like, you know what? We're paying three bucks a month or whatever for 200 gigs of iCloud storage. And a lot of this is iCloud drive. Why don't I just store all of that iCloud drive stuff locally? That way we can get rid of the buy more storage pop up. And of course there's plenty of space locally on the MacBook Pro. So started offloading more and more of that. And also a big chunk of our iCloud was backups. You know, it seems pretty reasonable and logical that you would back up your phone or back up your iPad to the cloud in case you were ever to lose it in your life, you would have all of that data restored on the next device. But I realized I was not utilizing this properly because for one, I've never lost my phone and needed to restore it from a backup. Sure, it's nice to have when it's there, but it's never been a scenario that's popped up for me. And of course, it's far more likely that if I'm off on a hike somewhere or on a trip or swimming in the ocean, filming things with my phone, I'm probably not gonna have my laptop with me. So I decided, you know what? I'll just start doing local backups instead of iCloud backups to my MacBook and even my iMac Pro, which I still have trade-in value for the iMac Pro is terrible, so I'm not getting rid of it. I couldn't find a buyer for it either, so I was like, you know what? This iMac is sitting here at home all the time. It's not going to be lost in some, like, freak accident, fairly likely, so I started doing more local backups for not just my phone and iPad, but also my wife's phone and iPad. So we still have those backups, but it's no longer counting towards our iCloud storage. Another big contributing factor was messages, and this is when things things start getting a bit more complicated because as soon as iCloud messages was available, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I was like, hey, all the messages are syncing between devices. This is awesome. This is cool. But once you start realizing all of those GIFs you send people or all of those pictures and videos also start getting stored in iCloud and they just kind of hang there forever, it starts taking up a heck of a lot more storage. So I was paranoid that if I turned off iCloud messages, it would just start deleting all this stuff. But luckily, if you have enough local storage on your devices, even when you turn off off iCloud messages. All those pictures and videos are still stored. It's just they're going to take around 30 days to download and be stored locally in the background. So I have a 256 gig iPhone 13. So there was plenty of space for my messages to be downloaded. Even my iPad with 64 gigs didn't run out of space when I switched off iCloud messages. So there may be a bit less symmetry with iMessage syncing between devices, but everything is powered just through my phone number at the end of the day, not my email. And so far it's been off for the past couple weeks and I haven't noticed. I just keep using my Apple ecosystem the way I did before. Even when you need that like login code, it still has the autofill option. So everything's still working. But getting a lot of my wife's photos off of iCloud after the Google Photos promo ended was quite challenging because Apple kind of makes it awkward and weird in the Photos app on Macs and iPhones where, you know, you want to turn off iCloud photos, but because her phone is 64 gigs, it's like, hey, you've got like 12,000 pictures here. You don't have enough space for all these. So if you turn this off, we're going to delete a bunch of stuff. And I'm really sad to say that it was quite stressful and quite annoying because she has a lot of family pictures and a lot of nostalgia in that photo library. And of course, we were just trying to figure out how do we download all these things, get them off of iCloud so that we can downgrade our iCloud storage. And a lot of the web didn't have great answers. It was just like, here's how you upgrade your iCloud storage. And here's how you download a copy of your photos. But not too many were saying like, here's how to remove them from iCloud cloud, but still preserve them. So I'll cut to the chase and tell you how we do it. Basically with our iMac Pro, we had a profile set up just for her. We made sure that we had download originals turned on. So it took a few days, but it did work. We were able to sign into her Apple ID on her own account and it downloaded all 12,000 pictures and videos. And the confusing thing about it was we were worried that if she started deleting things off of her phone, 
it would start deleting those things off of the Mac as well. But when you have download and keep originals turned on on the Mac, it seems to leave those there, even if you're deleting stuff off of your phone, which is iCloud. And then just to be absolutely sure, I made a physical backup on a CFast card and moved it over to my MacBook Pro of the photos library on the iMac, because whenever we tried to turn off iCloud photos on the Mac, it kept saying, warning, we're gonna delete 5,000 low resolution pictures and videos from this device. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get your photos off the cloud. Why do you need to delete stuff locally, iMac? if I'm just trying to turn off a cloud service. Like, I don't want you backing up more stuff to the cloud when we're actively trying to downgrade the iCloud storage. So I think the wording and phrasing and simplicity could be a lot simpler done for people who are trying to scale back on their iCloud usage. But of course, with Apple and their services and the way the software is all built, it's not meant to think about what happens if someone wants to downgrade, right? It's all optimized and streamlined for, oh, you're full again, time to buy more storage. Oh, you're full again. Even if you fill up two terabytes, it's like, oh, oh well, I guess you gotta buy Apple One to get four terabytes. I don't know what happens when you fill all four. What do they do at that point? They're like, uh, buy more Apple products so you could have a second Apple ID. Yeah, the whole situation was ridiculous. She was paranoid the whole time that like, oh no, I'm gonna delete my family pictures and all these videos from trips I took. So we had to double check and triple check so many times to be like, okay, delete it from the phone. Is it still on the computer? Yes, it is. Okay, we're good. So after all that, she worked really, really hard deleting everything off of her iCloud, getting rid of her backups that were stored on iCloud and still we found ourselves a little over 10 gigs and iCloud Drive was listed at 6.7 gigs which I thought man I thought I got rid of everything what is still here I go through there I search everything in the folders I check for iCloud backups I check for videos I check for files or intros and outros you know the nostalgia from previous Delosive network channels and stuff and I'm like okay this is part of my history you know I want to remember these things but I'm storing it all locally now so I've deleted it off of of iCloud, I make sure I have a local version of it, and it's not going away. In fact, if I try to open iCloud Drive in the iCloud settings, there's nothing there. There's nothing listed, and if I tap it, it just buffers for a second, it goes away. And before anybody tries to give me tech support in the comments, yes, I've tried on every device, I've tried restarting, I've tried updating the software, none of these things fixed it. There is still, as I'm recording this right now, 6.7 gigs in iCloud Drive, despite the fact that iCloud Drive is literally turned off on every single device I'm signed into. I deleted everything from in there. There's no pages. There's no numbers. There's no videos. There's no documents of any kind. Literally, if I open the files app, it says iCloud Drive is turned off and yet somehow it's consuming 6.7 gigs. I don't know how, but it's quite annoying when there's a software bug that is causing Apple to encourage you to sign up for an iCloud tier. They're like, hey, you're using too much storage. You need to give us a dollar a month, even though I'm literally storing less than one gigabyte in iCloud at this point. They're like, nope, you're filling it up. I called Apple today. I was on the phone for an hour trying to figure out how do I get rid of this storage? And the lady I talked to, who was very nice and respectful and friendly, and I appreciate Apple, you know, calling me right away. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I couldn't do the online chat thing. That's what I prefer doing. I don't really like talking to people, but she was understanding and nice about it. But even after an hour of talking and her talking to her supervisor, Apple themselves, customer support agreed, they don't know how to get rid of this storage off of my iCloud plan. So I have to keep dealing with the pop-up. You're out of space. You're out of space. You need to upgrade. You need to upgrade. And I kept saying, I don't want to upgrade. You know, I'm trying to keep it under five gigs. And I'm sorry. It's not about the fact that it would be $1 a month to have 50 gigs. It's not about about saving 12 bucks a year. That's not the point of this. The point is the principle of paying for exactly what you use. And we were using under the free limit that Apple had put out there. So no, I was not gonna pay a dollar a month or $12 a year just because of a software bug. Even though I could easily afford it for the rest of my life and it would be no problem, it's the principle of the thing. So basically after talking with them for an hour, they came to the conclusion that, well, after 30 days, iCloud should delete whatever these ghost files are anyway and I just wanted to ensure that the iCloud stuff that I do care about like my notes and my voice memos and you know my contacts all the basic stuff that's just megabytes not even gigs I was like can that be preserved you know get rid of these ghost files and let me keep the 200 megabytes of stuff that I do actually plan on using and she affirmed me that yes it will get rid of the iCloud drive files in 30 days I just have to wait basically they don't have a way on their end to get rid of the ghost files and I can't do anything on my end no matter what the device I log in on, it always just says other, you know, there's other documents filling up 6.7 gigs and I can't find a delete option anywhere. Not on the web, not on the Mac, not on the iPad, not on the phone. We tried everything. 
okay? Don't give me tech support ideas. But of course, there's still documents and files and pictures. I understand that you guys don't want to store locally because, you know, backups are kind of nice and handy. So, you know, there could be a fire that wipes out all my computers or I could get robbed and people take all my stuff. Not likely based on the area I live in. It's pretty rural and pretty safe. But okay, even in that scenario, I understand why some people want to have cloud storage, which is why I started thinking, well, I can't really store very much with five gigs, but you know, Google Drive has 15 for free. That's pretty nice and it doesn't cost anything. Of course, if you're watching this, you already have a Google account, so might as well take advantage of that. Now you have 20 gigs of cloud storage for free, but I wanted to take it a step further to see what else is out there. So I basically just Googled what cloud service has the most free storage that you can utilize. And that's how I found Digu or Dijo or a uh, Diga? I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sure I'm butchering it right now, but let me clarify from the beginning. This is not a sponsored video and you'll understand why it's because I don't necessarily love Digu. I'm just kind of trying to take advantage and utilize all of the free cloud space they're offering, but there's all kinds of reasons for you to not use Digu and clarifications I'll make from the beginning because there's a lot of these that may be deal breakers for you guys. So for one, the reason I found out about them is because as far as I know, they're the only cloud service out there that is offering a hundred gigabytes of storage for free with like a million pieces of fine print and like technical things you have to work around. So I'm not trying to say that's what everyone should switch to and cancel your iCloud and Google Drive. Like those services are honestly better and I'm comfortable saying that after using Digu, but here's some of the caveats for offering a hundred gigs of free cloud storage. For one, there's ads. So yeah, if you hate commercials, this is gonna be quite annoying too. Luckily, I don't access my cloud files that regularly though, so it's nice to have backups of my intros, outros, or music files, or memories, or documents, or you know, wedding pictures and that kind of thing. It's nice to have those backed up somewhere else aside from local storage, of course, for redundancy's sake, but whenever you do pull up those files, you get little banner ads within the phone app and on the web, which is kind of annoying. The other thing is they have a file size limiter, which means that you can't just upload a 100 gigabyte file for free. Basically, individual files have to be limited to under 250 megabytes, which is not very much, and that will basically stop you from storing a lot of videos on Digu, but pictures are usually under 250 megabytes a piece, so you can get 100 gigs of free cloud storage, granted, with ads, and the UI is kind of clunky. It's definitely not as clean or as integrated as Google Drive or iCloud is, but they even have some other built-in features to unlock more than 100 gigs, which I kind of like. So for one, just like Mint Mobile, who I'm a big fan of, they do have a referral program, but this is not a separate code that only YouTubers get. Anybody can get this. So if just you and your family all want to have your own accounts, refer them and each of you will get an additional five gigs of extra cloud storage. So basically every referral grants you one entire iCloud's worth of cloud storage just for, you know, files and documents and pictures and stuff that are under 250 megabytes a piece. And if you're on Android, Android, this is the craziest thing I saw them offer. I'm not, so I'm not gonna do this, but they say on Android, you can actually choose to watch commercials and that will unlock more additional cloud storage space. So something like 750 megabytes for every commercial you watch. Now there's a limit. Obviously you can't just watch commercials for the end of time. If you max out these referral benefits for free, you'll get an additional 500 gigs of cloud storage. So that means 600 gigs in total if you just referred all the people and watched all the commercials and ads and that kind of thing. So obviously it's not a perfect solution, but the great thing about free cloud storage options is you don't have to pick one or the other. You can do what I did, sign in through your Google account with the goo, so you don't need to come up with an additional email or password or anything. Store a bunch of files, you know, the smaller ones on there because you can get well over a hundred gigs of free cloud storage space. Of course, referral link in the description, I had to do it. But then for your more precious items like iCloud backup, or videos, you could put those more on Google Photos because they give you 15 gigs for free or for iCloud backups. Of course, that's got to be through iCloud. So use that on your five gig plan or just reduce your spending from 200 gigs of cloud space or two terabytes or whatever. And just look at what you really actually need to be on iCloud. And maybe you can downgrade to the 50 gig plan, save yourself some money because, you know, recession is a thing right now and just pay for what you absolutely need instead of buying all of this additional storage that 
oftentimes Apple is specking out specifically so that you have a lot of extra space that you don't end up using. Fundamentally, I guess I'm just against the idea of having to pay an infinite amount to store your family memories and nostalgia. Like it was honestly so stressful for me and my wife to be like trying to negotiate like a hostage situation of all these old pictures and videos. Like, please let us have them. Don't delete them. But Apple was kind of holding all of the photos and videos back and they're like, sorry, you have to keep paying for these. Do you care about your childhood and your memories? Well, you got to keep paying us. I didn't like that situation. I know a lot of you are comfortable with it and you're just like, yeah, it's a sunk cost. I'll pay 10 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month for the rest of my life for cloud storage. That's your decision. You can make that call. But we wanted to see where we could live with less and challenge ourselves to get rid of more and more subscriptions, save money in possible so that we could focus on investing in other things that we were more interested in in the long term. But yeah, I figured I'd let you guys in on this journey and how frustrating it was for Apple to have ghost files that make me go past the five gigabyte storage limit. And I thought it was ridiculous that there was basically nothing I can do to get rid of those. Like that's a really messed up bug, especially when the result of that bug is to advertise to the user constantly, give us money, give us money, even though it's Apple at fault. And I thought the other free cloud storage options out there were pretty cool. Even Daegu or whatever they're called has paid options that are really, really good value, like $10 a month gets rid of the commercials and lets you access the service from more devices. And they'll give you 10 terabytes of cloud storage. And I was curious if there's still a file size limit on those 10 terabytes. Like if you upgrade to the pro version, can you upload larger size videos and stuff? So I asked them, I sent out an email and said, hey, what happens if I go pro? Like, do I get to upload larger file sizes? And I never heard back from them. This was like over a week ago now. So customer support might also not be very great with Daegu. So put your cloud stuff there at your own risk. I mean, most people I've talked to have been pretty happy with it, but obviously you're getting what you pay for. You take a hit in UI fluidity and ease of use and customer support, but they make up for it with just offering you an insane amount of cloud storage for a fraction of the price. So some of you may be interested in that, but of course I don't expect most of you to be. But if you are, feel free to use the code in the description. You'll get five gigs of additional cloud storage for free. And hopefully we can all have a smaller and smaller digital footprint that we won't have to pay an increasing amount for because I just can visualize everybody having more and more pictures in videos over the course of our lifetimes to the point where all of us are going to need to pay, you know, 30, 50 bucks a month to store our five terabytes or 10 terabytes of videos and that kind of thing. So don't tell me to get a NAS. I don't want a NAS. I like my storage to be localized, but still mobile so that I can take my laptop with me. And there's very few power outlets in here, but what other concepts or tech tactics do you guys have for keeping cloud storage low? All that good stuff. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.